and welcome back to the garage with Bonesaw. Today we'll be looking at the French Tier 7 heavy tank, the AMX M4 1945. Now, the AMX M4 1945 is a very effective uh, Tier 7 heavy tank, um, and it's another turning point in the French tech tree. Because if we just take a look at the, uh, the French tech tree, um, as you can see with the, the heavy tank line, you start with things like the D1, the D2, and the B1. Um, these are all very heavily armoured tanks for their tier, but their firepower is somewhat limited. Um, they, generally speaking, share 45mm guns that are not extremely effective. Um, they can deal decent amounts of damage to vehicles at their own tier, but having to face off against more heavily armoured opponents um, is very much not in their favour. When you get to about tier 5, you get the uh, BDIG-1B. Um, this tank is another contentious one, a bit like the ARL-44. I personally really enjoyed it. Um, it was one of my first heavy tanks that I ever drove, and I very much enjoyed it simply because of its uh, reliable capability to kill enemy heavy tanks like the KV uh, with the 90mm gun that it gets. Um, but once again, it's, it's something of a trade um, in that it gets a very effective gun, but has much less armour than the B1. It, it only has about... Um, I think 60 millimeters on the front, and much I think 40 or 30 millimeters on the side. It's not very heavily armored. And at tier six, you get to the ARL 44. Now the ARL, as I mentioned in the ARL review, um, it kind of seems to strike the balance. Um, it has quite an amount of firepower with the top DCA 45 gun. It is a tier six tank that gets a tier eight um, 90 millimeter gun. Um, and it also has a decent amount of hull armor with a, uh, a well-sloped 120mm frontal plate. Um, and it's really, it's the turning point um, between, I guess you'd say, the French trend in heavy tanks, with the low tiers being heavy armor, poor gun. Um, in the upper tiers, it tends to go the other direction. They start trading off armor for the autoloaders, which you get on the AMX-50, um, all the way up to the AMX-50B. Um, the AMX-M4 1945 is, I guess you say, it's the turning point. It's the the tank that you get to uh, adapt to the autoloader playstyle before you get an autoloader. So as you can see on the uh, stats listed on the side, it has 90 millimeters of frontal plate. Um, it's still sloped quite well, so that'll probably scale up to about maybe 130, 140 millimeters. Still not amazing. Um, the slope is not too heavy, so don't count on bouncing that many shots unless you're very steeply angled. Um, also angling yourself, you can't really angle yourself um, like you can in the the uh, German heavy tanks like the Tiger because with the Tiger, the Tiger only has um, 20 millimeters less on its side plates so it has 80 millimeters side and 100 millimeters front so when you angle yourself in the, the diamond pattern um, with your gun pointing over the corner of your tank um, you form essentially a triangle of 80 millimeters on one side, 100 millimeters on the other side which then uh, due to the sloping increases to being about um, 150 and 140 respectively, um, or close to. Unfortunately for the AMX M4, it only has 40 millimeters of side plate. It does have a slight inward slope to it, um, which means you can very rarely get some lucky bounces on it, but generally speaking your side armor won't protect you and you really do not want to get shot in the side in this tank. Um, and you're, unlike the ARL where you had the, the suspension which could eat rounds because it went all the way around the tank, um, on the AMX M4 your suspension is down low, um, so generally speaking it won't protect you from uh, much incoming fire. Your turret is well rounded um, and it is 100mm thick, however um, once again don't count on it to bounce shots because taking uh, shots into this upper facing here um, is a common occurrence and it's much much thinner than the 100mm you will get penetrated through there easily. Um, the, the cupola for the commander is thankfully uh, quite low, meaning you generally speaking won't lose your commander. Um, the most common crew member lost in this tank is probably um, either the radio man located uh, behind the machine gun port here or the driver located behind the driver's port there, simply because your uh, frontal armor is so thin. Um, you can see aesthetically that this tank does look quite similar to some of the higher tier German tanks, like the uh, King Tiger or the uh, VK-45 Alpha. Um, and there's a reason for this, and that was just the fact that um, 
this tank, along with many of the other French tanks, were developed um, immediately after World War II. In fact, this tank, as you can probably tell from its uh, numerical designation of 1945, was developed pretty much right on the end of the war um, using information gathered from captured German heavy tanks. So as you can see, the, uh, the rear engine deck very much resembles that of King Tiger or a Panther, um, with the inward sloping, the, um, the exhaust placement, and the air intakes there. Um, the turrets also, as you can see, the, the precursor to those um, very modern battle tank turrets with the uh, hexagonal shape to give increased volume as well as adequate sloping. Um, overall, this tank is very mobile. It has a listed speed of 35 um, with the top engine, which is a uh, 850 horsepower Maybach, which is actually the same as the top engine on the Tiger. Um, unfortunately, the Tiger will be losing that in the next patch, patch 8.8. .8. Um, not to worry, the French tanks are keeping them. Um, but yes, with the with the top engine, um, it's a very mobile tank. It gets up to the top speed of 35 kilometers very quickly. Um, it generally exceeds it. It's a very very mobile tank, and you really need to use that mobility. Um, the traverse isn't amazing with only 24 degrees, but um, generally speaking, uh, you can maneuver quite well in this tank. It's not very sluggish, um, and a 30 degree tu turret traverse is uh, quite good as well. 360. Um, meters of view range will allow you to sit back to some extent um, and 750 meters of signal range will keep you in contact. This is all very important because uh, this tank is not a frontline um, battle tank. Unlike things like the KV-3, um, the IS, uh, the Black Prince, you really don't want to be up in the thick of it. You don't have enough armor for that. Um, generally speaking, you want to be a second line heavy. You want to um, shoot at range with the DCA-45 gun. It's the same top gun on the uh, ARL-44. Um, still pretty accurate with the 0.36 accuracy. Uh, the aim time of 2.9 is still considerable, but it you can work within it. Um, it's not amazing for pop-out shooting like on um, some of the, the German heavies like the King Tiger or the, uh, the Lerva, but Generally speaking, um, you want to be kind of lurking around the backfield so the enemy won't be seeing you before you uh, take your shots. Um, it does have a slightly higher rate of fire, um, and I, I believe the aim time is better on the um, AMX M4 compared to the ARL. Um, still great penetration for tier 7, 212 millimeters, um, which I believe is the highest of all the uh, tier 7 heavy tanks, 240 average damage per shot. Um, generally rolling well around that average. Um, overall, as I said, you, you really don't want to get uh, up close with this tank. Um, generally, um, you want to kind of pop out um, and prey on those those wounded tanks, which is very much the style that the uh, the French auto-loading heavy tanks um, play play in, um, where you really need to conserve your shots and um, kind of pace yourself between those magazine reloads. The advantage of the mobility of this tank, though, does allow you to uh, switch flanks very easily um, and really apply pressure to unexpected um, avenues of attack on the enemy team, um, engage from flanks, um, and really just help your team out. Um, with the good rate of fire on this gun of uh, 6.98 rounds, um, that is, granted that is fitted with 100% crew and a gun rammer, um, it's still uh, quite adequate at dealing out damage, you just have to make sure you don't take uh, da too much damage in return. Um, this tank only has 1200 hit points, um, which is kind of the French thing. They don't have much health. This is the lowest health of any um, tier 7 heavy tank. Um, also important note is the gun depression on this tank. Now I'll just angle the, uh, the camera down like this. The ARL44 did not have very good gun depression. The AMX M4 makes up for this. It has quite good gun depression. As you can see, the, the gun can angle downwards. It's not amazing, but you have some angle um, because there is this overhang over the, uh, the front glasses plate. However, there is a downside to this. As you can see, if you look at the tank front on, there's not as much of an overhang on the side plates. So what happens with this tank is that it has great gun depression within the frontal arc. If you turn the turret to the side, its gun depression is abominable. Um, anything around the side or the rear, it really has very poor gun depression. So you have to make sure that you don't um, get too overconfident with that speed. Um, a lot of time when I was learning to play this tank, I would find that I would um, 
try to use that speed a little bit too much, play it too much like a brawler, um, which is very much true with its cousin, the FCM 50T at tier 8. Um, but as I said, very often you try to use it like a, a brawler, circle around people, especially along ridge lines, things like that. Um, you turn the turret around to the left or right and then find you have absolutely no gun depression and the end result would generally be that your opponent would put um, a big hit through that 40 millimeters of side armor um, which would leave you very vulnerable to critical damage. Um, generally speaking this tank is very very effective um, at engaging heavy armor from a distance. Um, the gun is rather consistent um, and its mobility really just allows you to um, to pick your fights. Um, just be warned, the reverse speed is not amazing on this tank. It's pretty quick, but um, generally speaking, you don't want to be kind of having to pull out of an engagement quickly. Generally speaking, you should uh, use your judgment, predict the fight. Um, if the enemy seem like they're going to get close pretty soon, bug out, pull out to a different position, and um, just keep it taking them out from a distance. But much like the ARL 44, still a very effective damage dealer at tier, tier 7. Um, very reliable tier 7 tank, and if you're willing to put up with a lack of armor um, and engage in that kind of sniper assassin gameplay, then um, this will be a very rewarding tank for you, and it's a very, very effective asset on the battlefield. So here we are on uh, airfield in the French tier 7 heavy tank, the AMX M4 1945. Now this is a uh, pretty standard tier 8 match for this tank, um, we're roughly at the top of the middle of the tech tree, bottom of the top if you prefer that, um, and we're just going to roll up ahead here to uh, try and camp out the uh, the seaside route. Um, I find that's a pretty good position for uh, tanks like this that don't have much armour but have uh, quite accurate guns, you generally want to take up a good overwatch position and just use these choke points to your advantage. Um, keep yourself hidden um, for the most part and just take shots that are advantageous. I'm going to hide the bulk of my tank behind this uh, rocky outcrop and just uh, pre-aim my gun in on that corner. And we've made first contact with an enemy medium tank moving down the center and we've got a second medium tank up on that uh, hill there in the center. Now I do have some concern about uh, what may be also camping out on the opposite side. Um, that Isu 152 is a huge concern. I absolutely hate having to fight those things. Um, their 152mm anti-tank gun can be very, very dangerous. Um, and even though they're regarded as being uh, one of the lesser armoured vehicles um, in terms of tank destroyers at Tier 8, um, they are very capable of getting lucky bounces. Uh, speaking of, um, that looked like a bounce. That actually went into his tracks, and I damaged his tracks. Um, because tracks now count as spaced armor um, in World of Tanks, if you do hit someone in the tracks and it says bounced off, um, more than likely you've actually damaged their tracks. Alright, Fagline is moving ahead. Um, possibly going to get some scouts for me. He takes a uh, hit there from uh, something, we're not quite sure what, um, and a tiger reveals itself up on that ridge line. He puts a shot into Fagline and uh, I'm going to retaliate against the tiger. Slightly low damage roll there, but uh, as you can see the very high penetration of this gun um, taking into effect. Our uh, Su-122 firing some rounds as well. Fagline has taken a lot of damage there. Um, he's not in a particularly good position. Um, and unfortunately he can't really pull back. I believe he's lost his track. So I'll uh, track that tiger in return and uh, finish him off with my final shot. Um, unfortunately I was not fast enough to save Fagline and uh, the tiger finished him off. As you can see this uh, long 90mm gun, the DCA-45, um, is still very effective. Um, not quite as insane as it was on the uh, ARL-44, but it's got a much higher rate of fire and um, aim time on this tank. I'm just going to advance up onto this central hill here to try and get some uh, shots across into the uh, D D5 sector around about there to uh, support our team. Um, and also because I'm pretty confident there won't be any tanks pushing around the, uh, the J sector. I'm um, just going to move around here to engage the enemy. Now, uh, being very cautious, um, and a T-44 does make itself 
apparent. Um, the gun depression on this tank, as I noted, um, is a bit squiffy when it goes to the side um, because it doesn't have enough overhang to depress, so I'm kind of having to re-angle my hull in order to be able to uh, engage on this slope. Um, and just trying to maneuver to keep keep things in my favour. I managed to uh, eat some of the rounds on my tracks, um, trying to angle my front plate. Um, although this tank isn't very heavily armoured, it only has about 90mm of front plate, uh, using that angle can still be very effective. As you can see there, I took a shot in the side plate and I'm very lucky that it did not damage my ammo rack. Um, losing your ammo rack on this tank uh, can be a tremendous loss um, as it really lowers your DPM. Alright, so I'll put a, uh, a shot to that T-44, nice 300 damage roll there, and uh, reload in time to finish him off. Alright, so I'm going to maneuver around up on this ridge again, try and get some more shots across to uh, the D sector. Unfortunately, most of the enemies there have either moved on or been taken out, so uh, my position up there isn't exactly uh, useful anymore. Um, instead, I'm going to probably turn around to uh, engage that heavy tank that's just made itself apparent down there, just uh, after I checked that that tank destroyer did not in fact uh, make itself vulnerable to me. I'm also a little bit worried about that heavy tank coming up behind me. Um, the Black Prince does take my track off, but I repair it and uh, manage to get away before he gets a second shot into me. Now I come down here to engage this uh, T-29. Uh, he was the one I shot the track off earlier. Um, unfortunately, our uh, Su-14-2 takes him out. Now, as you can see, um, things aren't going all that well for our team. Um, at the moment, we are taking some significant losses. Um, we do have two very powerful tanks in the midfield, a ISU-152 and a Black Prince. Um, and our T-32, who's already dead, is raging in the chat. However, I'm going to sneak along here because I know that there are no enemies guarding this approach anymore except for perhaps our two artillery pieces and uh, provided that I don't really take a direct hit, um, I can most assuredly kill them. Uh, and as you can see, a tree just fell over there so I know where they are. And uh, next we'll show you kind of what happened now that um, they've changed the normalization values in World of Tanks. And it's one of the most baffling things that I've ever had happen to me. AMX 13 F3. He has roughly 30 millimeters of front armor, and I bounced. All right, so I got to avoid his shot. There is a Hummel lurking around there as well, so I'll wait till I uh, reload, maneuver around, and uh, try and get a shot into him. I do have to be careful though, because he's spotting me for that Hummel. All right, I found the Hummel. Take a hit from the Hummel. Um, I'm very lucky I did. I survived on that, um, but I'll put a shot into him very low damage roll there, uh, which was surprising. Um, moving around, just trying to get a sh uh, view on where that uh, AMX is facing. Finish the Hummel off. Maneuver around, try to get on the uh, blind side of this AMX while I reload. He'll miss his shot, and then uh, death to ramming. So that's uh, four kills in the uh, AMX M4. Um, as you can see, it's a very effective tank. Um, provide you play it right and uh, try to conserve your health due to that low armor. So here we are with the uh, AMX M4 1945 French Tier 7 Heavy on Redshire. Fagline is in his Tier 7 German Heavy, the Tiger H, and uh, we're going to push along the uh, western flank, which is generally what you do when you're the uh, top tier heavies in a game. Uh, we're both filling the position of top Tier 7 Heavies in this game, it's a very Tier 6 game. Um, I will apologise beforehand, as you saw there, there was a little bit of rubber banding going on. Um, I don't know what the reason is, but for some um, peculiar oddity um, in the 8.6 and 8.7 um, replays, some of them have been having issues with uh, rubber banding. You can see the M7 will do it um, a little bit as well. Um, and my tank will do it a little bit in this game. Um, this is not indicative of actual gameplay footage. The, um, in the actual game when I played it, everything was fine. It's just the replay file. Um, and generally speaking, when I'm shooting, it doesn't happen. Um, it's mainly when I'm moving, but I will uh, apologize anyway. So as you can see, the, uh, the AMX M4 has a, a good turn of speed, easily overtaking uh, Fagline's Tiger there. I'm up to uh, my top speed of about uh, 35 kilometers at the moment, and just moving along this western flank to uh, counter any mediums that might be trying to uh, do a flank push here. Um, 
If there are any mediums, we will then circle around along the uh, the one line and try to encircle the ridge line. So I'm just uh, trying to stick to the valleys as much as possible. Uh, the AMX M4 does not have very much armor, and I'm very much trying to conceal myself because I do not want to be taking any side shots. Um, with only 40 millimeters of armor on the side, um, I am particularly vulnerable at the moment. So really, just it's about concealment. Um, just popping over this ridge here, trying to get a snapshot in, in case there are any. Um, mediums attempting a similar uh, tactic but uh, at the moment this uh, position seems clear so we're uh, moving on ahead I have Fagline and another heavy tank uh, behind me in support and we've just gotten spots from our allies on a uh, medium tank and he's a uh, VK3601H so I'm going to move over here uh, keep myself angled towards the ridge line uh, try and get a shot in on the VK but he's on fire and I don't get a shot before he dies I'm just going to try and back towards into the uh, valley again, reverse around and continue the assault. However, we have uh, spotted a tank destroyer, so I figured it's worth getting a shot on him. And here you can see the uh, somewhat finicky depression and elevation on this gun. I had to reverse in order to uh, get my gun onto bear, but unfortunately I uh, don't get a shot at that uh, Su-100 at the moment. Alright, we've now got a spot on a uh, T-3485, thanks to that Cromwell, and uh, just aim the gun in. And as you can see, even though he's angled, uh, this will just cut right through his armor for a good 258 damage roll. Um, that's slightly above average. Um, generally, this gun sits right on the average or just above, um, which is very good. Um, owing to its rate of fire and uh, good penetration, you can do some very consistent damage. Right, so our, our Cromwell spotted some more things on the ridge line, but I'm just going to move around here and try to engage this uh, Su-100. Um, he's not too much of an issue. He can damage me, but uh, my gun is superior. However, we spotted another Su-100 up on the ridge line. I think he he's worth taking out because he's on low health. So even though he's backing up, I'm going to uh, take the shot. And bam! Right through the uh, front plate for a kill shot. As you can see, uh, even though it's it's uh, the same gun you had on the ARL at tier six, the uh, DCA-45 with 212 millimeters of penetration is still highly effective at tier seven. As you can see, finishing off another Su-100 in the rear. Um, it is potentially more effective on this tank, simply due to uh, this tank's mobility. The ARL was not a particularly mobile tank, um, and at Tier 7, um, with the high top speed of this tank for a heavy um, you, and good gun depression, you really can bring it to uh, bear in, in different locations um, along the flanks, like um, I'm doing right now. So we've got some uh, spots on the cliff, unfortunately our T-21 was destroyed by an enemy ARL. So I'll move up to engage this uh, KV-1S and uh, finish him off with a single shot to the uh, flat section of his armor. Um, and as you can see, that's really where the accuracy of this gun comes into bear. Um, I could have easily bounced had it been an another gun, um, but the DCA-45 has enough accuracy that you can really can go for those uh, very assured um, penetration areas like the, uh, the flat sections of hull on a uh, KV-1S. Uh, so we've got an ARL with the barn turret and I'll uh, put a shot through him and leave Fagline to finish him off. Um, I need to give some credit to Fagline. Um, he only gets one kill in this game but he actually does a lot of very good damage. Um, so I'll shoot the Cromwell. Bounce a shot in return from the Cromwell. Um, which it was unexpected um, but it does happen. So I'll uh, put another shot into Cromwell, slightly below average, um, leaving him on 17%. I'll go after the artillery because I'm a scumbag and I like easy kills, but he's already been killed, so I'll take out the uh, T25 instead. And that just leaves the Cromwell on 17%, and our allies are uh, rushing the hill. So that's uh, four kills on uh, Redshire. As you can see, that uh, DCA 45 90mm gun is still incredibly effective at tier 7. Um, more than capable of uh, dealing your own weight and damage back. 